Welcome back to the Caregiver Minute, where every weekday family and professional caregivers gather to refine their skills, gain inspiration, and prepare to serve. The other night, I had a phone call from a good friend who was a little bit distressed because his teenage daughter had revealed to him that she was getting really stressed out and feeling overwhelmed by the fact that a friend of hers, a young man, was experiencing tremendous anxiety and he wouldn't talk to his parents or any other adults about it. Instead, he was coming to her, expecting her to talk him off the emotional ledge. He was a well-known, well-liked young man who wanted to appear on the outside like everything was put together, but inwardly, he's been struggling a lot. This friend of mine wondered what advice he could give his daughter about how to handle that situation. Now, it turns out this young man's parents are aware that he's struggling, They might not know the degree to which he's struggling, but there's still going to be this dynamic where this young man and young woman are having regular interactions. And as I thought more about it, I realized there's a lesson in this for all of us because many people experience anxiety at higher levels than would be healthy, and they often seek for somebody to talk them off the ledge. When in reality, what's more helpful is to create the conditions where the body reduces anxiety itself, where someone is more resilient in dealing with stress and anxiety, and they have strategies that work and don't exacerbate the problem long term. If someone is constantly turning to others for reassurance to talk them off the ledge, the next time they're triggered, the anxiety tends to come back even worse. So in discussing with this friend, how he might give advice to his daughter, I encouraged him to teach her the techniques of mirroring and labeling. Now, I've mentioned those before here on the Caregiver Minute, but most of us have to hear things multiple times before they sink in, so I wanted to bring it up again. Mirroring is when you listen for the one to three words that are most important in what the other person says, and you repeat them back as if in the form of a question. So if the young man in this story says something like, I just don't think I can go on. This young lady could say, go on. And by mirroring it back in the form of a question, it's a subtle way of saying, keep talking. I'm here. I'm listening. I'm right here with you. I'm supporting you. But I want to help you process this yourself. I don't want to take the burden away from you. I want you to get better at confronting it. And I'm going to help you through that. As far as labeling, that's when you think about the emotion that the person seems to be expressing and you put an emotional label on it. Sounds like you're frustrated. Sounds like you're upset. Sounds like you're discouraged. Sounds like you're feeling irritated. Whatever it is, if you can put a label on it, it forces the thinking part of the brain to sort of take over from the emotional part of the brain, the feeling brain. The feeling brain has no capacity for language. And as soon as we start talking about words related to feelings, now we shift gears, we help the other person shift gears and start using the prefrontal cortex, the thinking brain. And that reduces some of the stress. The more we label and go back and forth and in a non-judgmental way and just sit there and allow the person to experience what's going on and to wrestle with it, the more their brain will do its job to reduce the anxiety that they're experiencing. And they come away, instead of feeling like, oh, thank goodness for you, you just talked me off the ledge, they come away more empowered, feeling like, all right, thank you, that was helpful, I needed someone to talk to to help help me work through this. But there's a sense of accomplishment, and it's less likely that the anxiety will be triggered to the same level the next time around. When you rinse and repeat that over and over, people gradually gain more control in dealing with those difficult emotional situations. We can use that technique with people who are living with dementia. We can use it with coworkers and friends. We can use it with family members. We can even use it in our own lives. If we notice that we're getting anxious or upset, we can say, I'm feeling tense. I'm feeling frustrated. I notice that I'm, I'm gritting my teeth or, or whatever sign that you see that things are going down the wrong emotional path. We gain more control when we're observant and we call out what we think that it is. And then we keep wrestling with that. Well, I hope that's helpful to you and the people you serve. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow for another episode of the Caregiver Minute.